Hi guys. It is another cold, nasty midwinter day in mid-November here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a 24 degree heading to 18 degree Sunday, November 20th, 2022. So since it is Sunday and it's time for my doomsday sermon, I I kind of did my doomsday sermon. I did it last night. Uh, what was that fellow's name? Eugene Linden. Uh, so I kind of used up my doomsday sermon. So I woke up this morning thinking, oh no, where can I find a doomsday sermon? Then I said, of course, I will just go over to Umer Hacks website uh, for my Sunday sermon. You know, Umer, he's on this platform called Medium.com and uh, unfortunately a couple of months ago Medium.com uh, went behind a paywall so I guess you get one free story per month uh, and the problem is Elon Hack is a writing machine. He's kind of like the James Missioner of the Doomosphere. The guy, I could not type as, yes. as fast as this guy writes. And uh, good Lord, this man, uh, with his prodigious output. And uh, I just had to throw a dart because it's been about a month since my last one. I bet you can just throw a dart because pretty much every day this man uh, writes a, a, a chronicle of the collapse uh, that would take most people eight hours just to type without even thinking of anything to say. So I pretty much threw a dart. And it was, uh, said, good Lord, uh, because you know, if you click on one, that's it. Uh, so I clicked on one. I stuck a little Jack Horner, stuck his Doomer thumb into the Umer hack pie of doom. The pie of doom. And uh, this is what I came up with. And good God, this one would take an hour to read. I'm only going to read the second half of it. Uh, if you want, I will put the link on here and I think you'll be able to get through and read the first half and all of, well, if you want to sign up, it's like a dollar a week, I guess, if you want to sign up to medium.com. So anyway, what is the Doomer Plum of the week? Yes, no dog. The curtains are falling on our civilization one degree of warming at a time. We are hurtling into the age of extinction because we still do not understand the stakes. And he spends a lot of time uh, talking about one of these grim he actually uses the word grim. One, one of these many uh, grim UN reports that I've done a rant on already called the Emissions Gap Report. He really breaks that down in the first half. Uh, so anyway, I think we've all heard enough from the UN for a while. So I'm going to skip through the first half and I thought he was wrapping it up, but he was just launching into his own rant. So we're going to pick up in, I guess, Pakistan. He was talking, you know, about the Pakistan floods. <clears throat> Take it away. Umer hack. That is really why prices are skyrocketing. We are a civilization unable to supply ourselves with the same commodities as th at the same levels we grew accustomed to. Uh, Umer is some sort of economist. Suddenly, snap, just like that, 
entire nations can be taken down, left unable to function economically and maybe politically as a result for years to come. We're lucky that Pakistan wasn't, say, Western Europe or California or what have you, unless you are an unfortunate Pakistani, I guess. Because imagine a mega weather event of that scale hitting a region that you live in or one closer to your understanding. Imagine that next time California really does burn the way Pakistan flooded. What then? Then America does not feed itself. Its economy suddenly goes into shock. Waves of unemployment and homelessness and poverty strike while a volcanic financial crisis. Who pays for all that rips through society too. Lucky because all that is very much on the way. It is not a question of if California or Europe or any other part of the West is hit by mega scale impacts of climate change in a way that is far more catastrophic than people such as Book Hermit yet understand. Something like what happened to Pakistan. It is just a question of time. The mega scale impacts of climate change are here. This is what extinction with a capital E is. It doesn't mean Mad Max, suddenly we all die <coughs> and there's Mel Gibson making a crazy junkyard dog face waving a sword. It means that the planet becomes too hot for many, many species, the majority of them to inhabit at nearly the same levels in the same ways and life begins to go extinct. It doesn't mean that all life goes extinct and Earth turns into Venus. Sorry, this is reality, not sci-fi. But it does mean that extinction happens on a scale we have yet to comprehend that we don't have a word for across the planet to all life in every biome and ecology. And our civilization and everything it entails, economy, society, democracy, culture is hardly likely to survive an event like that intact. These mega scale events are what crossing the event horizon into the age of extinction is. They feel so ominous and eerie and weird because some primal part of us knows this really is different. And 300,000 years, no human being alive ever experienced what we are now. A planet heating this rapidly, ecosystems dying off this fast, ecosystems dying off this fast, mega weather ripping across the world this suddenly. It has never happened before to a single member of our species, but it has happened before, five times before in deep history. In each of these times, there was a mass extinction, capital M. In the most recent mass extinction, small m, 80% of animals went extinct. And the planet that emerged after? Well, again, 
it's hard for us to understand and many of us are making no attempt to really understand so try this and I don't know who he's quoting here uh, anyway I think he's quoting somebody or maybe it's just putting himself in italics towards the end of the Devonian period around 370 million years ago a pair of major events known as the Kellwasser event and the Hangenberg event combined to cause an enormous loss in biodiversity. It took, that took place over a huge span of time. Estimates range from 500,000 to 25 million years. The brunt of this extinction was born by marine invertebrates, as in the Ordovician extinction, many species of corals, trilobites, and brachiopods vanished. Corals in particular were so hard hit that they were nearly wiped out and did not recover until the Mesozoic era nearly 120 million years later. Got that? Many people think that life will bounce back or it's not a big deal. Everything will recover. Will it? Or will it take 120 million years? If it takes 120 million years for ecosystems to recover from mass extinction, how long do you think we will really be around given that we need the air, water, food, and medicine that life provides? See my point a little? Let me make the stakes even clearer. The Permian-Triassic extinction, as, I, as Brother Aaron will uh, fill you in on, the Permian-Triassic extinction killed off so much of life on Earth that it is also known as the Great Dying. Marine invertebrates were particularly hard hit again by this extinction, especially trilobites, which were finally killed off entirely. But you don't get a nickname like the Great Dying for playing favorites. Almost no form of life was spared by this extinction, which caused the disappearance of more than 95% of marine species and upward of 70% of land-dwelling vertebrates. So many species were wiped out by this mass extinction, it took more than 10 million years to recover from the huge blow to global biodiversity. Again, see the blow to the myth that, ah, don't worry about it, life will recover. Maybe it will after 10 million years. Those are time scales that human civilization is not capable of surviving. Hmm, do you think so? Because the human mind can barely comprehend them to begin with. We can hardly spend 10 million years in huts or shuddering around fires or what have you. We have only been around for 300,000. And the billionaires building bunkers? LOL. Good luck, guys. Hope you and your kids like spending a million years underground. Come on now. We don't understand the stakes here yet. At all. We are playing with time scales and orders of magnitude that are so grave and great they literally transcend the entirety of our species. Extinction is about 
billions of years, about billions of species. It's not just about waiting things out in a bunker for a decade or two. It is about the end. Not the end of life or even of us, but certainly the end of civilization, of culture, of society, of economics, of everything as we know it and think of it. You tell me if you think that any of that can survive on a planet that needs a million years to recover to an ecological and climate equilibrium. Go ahead and tell me how long you think human beings can survive poverty and instability and meltdown without killing each other to begin with. Is it anything close to even 10 years or a hundred? Tell me what form of human civilization, economics, society, technology, or anything else you really think can last a million years on a dying planet. LOL. Curtains. Now, if that's not scary enough, the wrinkle, the wrinkle is this. According to this, you know, this latest U Grim Dyer UN report, we are going to hit something like two and a half C of warming, even if current pledges are met. Only that is probably not true. Because we know that climate change doesn't really work like that, and that gauzy middle ground between two and three degrees feedbacks kick in, which push warming even higher. Feedbacks like what? Oh, like the ice sheets melting, which used to radiate heat and light, but now absorb them. Like the ocean currents slowing and not cooling the seas anymore. Like the northern forest burning, which are huge carbon sinks. Or like permafrost melting, which releases vast amounts of greenhouse gases. That is just a partial list of climate tipping points. And when those tipping points are hit, warming does not stop. It suddenly jumps, and it appears that we are on the brink of hitting many of those tipping points. It's something scientists already question. If we haven't hit them yet, we're getting awfully close, and when we do, then something that is hard for many to grasp happens. Warming does not magically just stop at two and a half C because it can't. Our planet is not built like that. At two and a half C, feedbacks kick in, that push it up to 3C or 4C, we don't really know. This is a non-linear system with multiple equilibria. There are only certain places the system can stop. It is not a linear system that can stop anywhere. Our planet appears to be a system that can warm to maybe one and a half C or three C, four C, not one, then can stop warming just anywhere we like. Doesn't work like that. So, how much more catastrophic will the mega scale impacts of three C or four C be? To put it simply, they are going to be unsurvivable, at least for our civilization. We're at maybe one sea of warming right now, 
and we've already got mega fires that rip through continents, heat waves that stretch across the globes, globe, globes, listen to me, rivers running dry, mega monsoons that take down entire countries. Imagine events more than three times that big, deadly, violent, because, of course, what happens at 3C is going to be exponentially worse than what happens at 1C. Imagine a mega monsoon. I don't know, five times the one that hit Pakistan, lasting five times as long, dumping five times as much rain. Imagine mega fires in California or Australia that are five times larger, spread five times faster, last five times longer. Imagine drought conditions that exist in many places already spreading five times wider, lasting five times longer, sinking five times the number of water tables and aquifers, or imagine five times as many events as the ones we see nearly every month, only five times as deadly, violent, and extreme. Who survives that? What survives that? Certainly our systems don't. Hospitals, energy grids, schools, food distribution networks, even just our homes and roads and so forth. Remember how I said we're playing with events which operate at time scales, at magnitudes, with a kind of violence that we don't yet understand? At this scale, it is curtains for us. Hence, the urgent need for transformation. It's not a joke. It's not a drill. Do you remember how, say, five years ago, I used to warn you about fascism? And it's here now. The same is true of extinction now in a larger way. We need to reinvent our basic systems. Now, all of them depend on fossil fuels. All of them. And we have no real idea how to live without them. Energy, food, water, household goods made of plastic, medicine, chemicals, concrete, glass, steel, we have literally no idea how to supply a world, our civilization, with this stuff without fossil fuels. And we have to figure it out now or we don't have a future. We just face extinction. There you go. I should wrap it up there but he tries to squeeze a couple of drops of opium. That is our challenge, it, our challenge to solve it, to solve it, yes. We need the greatest wave of investment in history. Yes, Biden's climate bill, uh-huh, is a small first step, a good one, a worthy one. Yes, in a world now so beset by fascism, it's forgotten about extinction, and yet these things go hand in hand. Who is obsessed with annihilation? Fascist, of course, haunted by it, afraid of it, so they go out there and enact it on someone else. This is the future we face, a tiny slice of it. On a dying planet, we just tear ourselves apart at the hands of demagogues, lunatics, fools, monsters and madmen, seduced by hate, 
driven out of our rational minds by fear, poverty, shame, neglect, humiliation, and insecurity, or we change. Uh -huh. Those are the stakes, my friend. Those are the stakes, my friend. When will it ever end? Those are the stakes, my friend. Curtains or transformation. But do we understand them yet? <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, well, we do have Umer Haik calling Joe Biden's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I I anyway, uh, we, we won't uh, smear an otherwise uh, excellent uh, slice of Doomer porn. So anyway, guys, I will put the link on here and uh, you can uh, go figure out how to read the rest of this or just pick one other, just throw a dart and pick one of his other uh, excellent articles or just... Uh, pay the dollar a week and read them all. So uh, in about a month, uh, remind me that I can probably get another uh, free Umer ha hack. Hack, I think. And we will see you in about a month. Uh, maybe we will get Umer Hack's review of the dog and pony show. I'm sure he's busily typing away now. But right now, uh, I need to go get a drink, go battle my way through the blowing snow to get an ice-cold margarita while I still can. And you're probably ready for your dinner. Are you ready for some chicken for your dinner? Bye, guys.